Okay. <laughs> this is this awkward moment where I'm not sure if I'm talking to myself or if there are people listening to me. If you are seeing and hearing me, could you send me a message? Just because I'm not very experienced in, in doing these live streams. This is the only only the third one I've done, and the last ones were a few months ago. So if you're out there, if anybody's there, according to the little icon, aha, yes, Jose Maria, thank you, Miguel, perfect. Thank you very much for confirming that. Lucas, good to have you here. Thank you very much for confirming that. So it's working, amazing. I'm terrible with technology, anybody who knows me, but maybe it's not a good idea to be a, a YouTuber if you're not good with technology, but it's working. Good, Kropka, hello, Hannah, hi. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, so we're going to be waiting for people to join, but what I thought we could do to start with, and it's it's very useful for me, I'd like you just to put in the comments, hi, Hugo, I'd put in the comments perhaps where you're from, because I'd find that interesting, um, which exam you're preparing for, if you're planning to take, and when you're going to take your exam, because that's that last question is quite important um, for me to know exactly what tips you're going to need. But uh, David or David, hi, I discovered your channel a couple of day, days ago, and I'm taking the C1 exam in three days. I love your videos. Well, thank you, David. Um, yeah, three days. I hope Hopefully, you've been preparing for longer than that. But uh, if not, yeah, my videos should help. And this live stream today should also help, because I know a lot of you um, a lot of people, I won't say you, but a lot of people leave their preparation to the last minute. I was like that when I was a student, so I can completely relate to that. Um, so I'm going to give some, some last minute tips today. So I'm just looking. So Paolo is from Italy, C1, 11th of June. Okay, so next week in six days. Hi, Tanya. Uh, David, again, from Spain. Okay, taking the C1 in a couple of days, as you said. Yeah, Lucas, Valencia, uh, CAE, no date. Okay. Good, so you probably have time. Roman, uh, the Czech Republic, C2. Okay, Peru, uh, Hugo, C2 next year. Okay, so you have plenty of time. Thank you. Good to know you're a fan of the channel. Um, yes, Sedzi, I think it, this should, this, this video, this live stream should save as a video later. I think YouTube automatically saves it and posts it as, as a video later. I hope that works like that. It should do. I don't have to do anything, I don't think. Uh, Jose, Maria, Jose Maria, regards from Spain, Seville, nice. Uh, B2, B2 this Friday, okay, great. Bosnia C1, Italy, okay, good. Anna Afnan from Pakistan, great. You want to achieve English fluency, okay, good to have you. Laura, hi, nice to see you, or nice to have you, I can't see you, you can see me. Uh, yeah. Mm, is that Marta? 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 I think. Hello from Ukraine. Good, good to have people from the Ukraine here. Uh, C1 moving with you to C2. Great. Yeah, let's go together. <laughs> Great. Go for the C2. Tai Tai Bankton friends for Emma Army forever. Okay. Uh, Sambrutha FCE this Tuesday. Yeah, I, I know there are a lot of exams coming up. That's why I wanted to do this live stream. Uh, so this Tuesday, uh, Mimosa from Germany taking FC two weeks. Okay, so you have a couple more weeks. Damien, so we have a lot of people. This is great. C1 in and B2, C1 exam this Wednesday, B2 in two weeks. Okay, never heard of that before. That's interesting, but go for it. Get two, two certificates, why not? High tech, Eng Sai um, from Spain. Romelia, hi from Romania. I know Romelia very well. Good to have you here, Romelia. Gossia from Poland, Tanya, C2 next year. Fatma from Turkey, good to have you. Simona, C1 in three days. <laughs> yeah, people getting nervous, I guess, if you have the exam coming up soon. Ukraine, France, CAE, Wednesday, C1 next. Yep, C1 in three days. So, yeah, we have 80 people here. So, said Z, yeah, do B2 and C1. You have to take C1, but you have one more year. Okay, Duki, Vietnam, CAE, looking forward to it. Good. Um, Sri Lanka, good. Tai Tai, Tajikistan. Wow, I think you're the first viewer from Tajikistan. Hope I'm pronouncing that well. Olga, good to have you. Thorsten from Germany, CAE. Okay, December, good. So you're 
you're uh, you understand that you need plenty of time to prepare for advance Marta on Friday hopefully you've been preparing before um <laughs> yes David I am I live in Spain uh, so I speak Spanish I live in Spain now I'm in England I'm at in my parents house this very room where I'm now this is where I this was my bedroom when I was growing up since because we moved to this village in Cambridgeshire when I was six years old and I basically, this was my bedroom from when I was six until I went to university when I was 18. It's changed a lot. When I was here at first, it had flash Gordon wallpaper and posters of the West Ham football team everywhere. But now it's it's my my parents, like, a, I don't know, you call it study or something, but uh, many memories here. So yeah, I speak, I speak Spanish, David, but could always improve, of course. So Marta from Poland. Okay, I see everyone. Yeah. Uh, so Romania, I am making a big effort. So thank you. Yeah, I hope I'm helping people. That's what I, I hope I, I hope I'm doing, especially with these exams because I know they're tough. Okay, Manuel, just you just want to learn English. You've got B two, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, neither of them. Okay, yeah, I understand. I, yeah, that's another conversation about whether English exams are the best way to improve your your level. But yeah, I know a lot of people need to take the exams. They need the certification. So. Uh, Remo from Italy, good to see you. Yeah, Tai Tai, B2 this Tuesday. Actually, Cambridge preparation for the exam. Yeah, from Spain, Romania. The Hammers, yeah, Roman, you know West Ham. Uh, Italy, Massimo this summer. Okay, could you details on what? Yes, we're going to start now. So I think we have plenty of people here. So I'm going to start. It's good to know. So a lot of you are taking the exam quite soon. I knew that would be the case because June is really the, the busiest month for the Cambridge English exams, Ju July 2. Uh, but June is the big month. Um, now, if any of you have seen my videos, any of my videos, you'll know that one of the biggest, one of the first tips I give you is to <laughs> give yourselves plenty of time. Um, so you should start preparing a couple of months in advance, at least. Now, some of you, I know you, you haven't done that or you haven't had the chance to do that if you are not taking the exam in the next couple of months then i would you know you, you should start preparing as soon as possible you it these are big exams there are, there's a lot to study it's not just about having the the level you may have an advanced level but that doesn't mean you're going to pass the advanced exam you may have a proficiency level but you may not pass it, it's it's a combination of having the level and being prepared really understand the, understanding the exam. Okay, so I have people from Russia, Uzbekistan, Iran. Yeah, you're going to take the IELTS. Okay, I think a lot of the tips I'm going to give will be valid for the IELTS. I specialize or I focus on the Cambridge exam, so the B2 first, C1 advanced and C2 proficiency. I'm not an expert on the IELTS, but a lot of the tips are valid. Uh, so C1, Remo, C1, just dropped in to say hi, my man. <laughs> ah, it's Rich. Rich, good to good to see you. You planning to take an exam, Rich? Um, uh, C three two, <laughs> not no, three C three level, I'm afraid, Peter. But maybe maybe one day. Uh, hello from Ukraine. I've watched many videos from you and helped me prepare, increase my confidence. Thank you very much. It's good to know that because I put these videos out and I hope I'm helping people, but I don't. It's difficult to have that connection with students, so I love to hear that. Romelia has seen all my videos. I know. <laughs> um, Anna, hi to you in Spain. Okay, Manuel, you've been following for nine, eight months, right? I've I've learned it's not compulsion to be a playwright and neither to be a chess beard. Okay, ah, Shakespeare, yes, <laughs> Shakespeare. Yeah, I think obsession by a diploma becomes a stressed one. Yes, I think people put too much pressure on themselves. It's it's difficult, but hopefully it can be fun. Um, hi Sylvia, hi Radek, hi Radhika, hi Maraya. I can't say hello to everyone because I want to talk to the camera, but um, yeah, it's a combination. You need to take these exams seriously because they are difficult and you really need to be organized and prepared. And that kind of sometimes becomes a stress for people. It can, some people enjoy studying English or enjoy surrounding themselves with English. But then they start preparing for an, an exam and they kind of lose that love. They lose that affection they have for the English language. I really hope you don't do that. I hope you can maintain a good relationship with English 
while you're preparing for the, the Cambridge English exams. I know it's difficult because it does become quite serious. But if you give yourself time, it should be OK. Um, so yeah, I think I've got my first good to see Defir Maria C2 exam in four days. But a question, yeah, do you think it's convenient and handy to use inversion in the B2 exam? Yeah, it's great. Why not? If you're sure you can use it well. It's an advanced grammar structure, but it's the same with the vocabulary. If you if you use advanced vocabulary in the B2 exam, great. As long as you you are sure you know you're using it well. So the inversion, inversion in the writing, it could be possible in the speaking. I think it's it's very difficult in the speaking to use advanced grammatical structures because you're going to be you have a lot to think about and you, you need to be in the zone. You need to be thinking about what you're saying. You need to be including your partner. So I, I don't recommend that you you try too hard to use advanced grammar and vocabulary in the speaking. Just try to get in the zone and focus on what you're saying. But in the writing, yes, you can use the examiners are looking for a range of grammatical structures at all levels um, and a wide range of voc vocabulary. So Again, if you're sure you're using it correctly and in an appropriate um, situation, I mean, you have to think about the register. In an informal letter to a friend, you probably wouldn't use um, inversion. So yeah, but in B2 is good. Hi, Hannah, I'm glad I'm help helping, thanks. Anna, you're an English teacher preparing students for the Cambridge exams. Ah, very nice that you recommend my, my videos, thank you. Hi, there from Ukraine. How are people who make simple mistakes, Dario, so, uh, like, why did you wrote supposed to pass the CA exam? I don't know. I don't understand. Well, you can make mistakes. You don't have to be perfect. I mean, that's a basic mistake, as you wrote, uh, Dario, but it's people make uh, slips. Sometimes they can be considered slips. It just if you make a lot of those mistakes, it's going to be very difficult to pass, of course. But some people just, it's not a fundamental deep mistake. It's just a lack of concentration. So I don't know where you've seen that, but um, sometimes it's just a lack of lack of concentration. Um, yeah, C1 is not a walk in the park. It's very difficult. All the exams are difficult. The B2 is tough. Um, hi, Natalie. I'm glad my videos helped. Oh, you got grey A at C2 proficiency. Wow. Fantastic. Congratulations. That's huge. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you for coming here to tell me that. It's, it's nice. Of course, you I guess you're not preparing anymore, but that's great. Oh, I see. So a lot of people in, in the Telegram group. Yeah, by the way, I have Telegram groups, a lot of Telegram groups. I have some free Telegram groups, which um, I'll put a link to later when I, when this video is up late, up um, uploaded. Uh, you can join for free and you can find like-minded people and you can chat to them. I also have a an exam academy, which is paid. So for about, well, about uh, 12 euros 50 per month, you get a lot of workshops with me and um, exam expert Frank. We get at least three per week, at least three workshops on the Cambridge English exams per week. Um, so I think that's really good value for money, but I'm not here to advertise that, but just because somebody mentioned it. Where is my cat? Well, it's a good question because my dog, Amy, came to England with us, but the cat is in a cattery, a home for cats in Spain. Uh, Defier, do you think it's good enough? Do you think it's enough to have decent English to study in Germany? program is thought in English. I don't understand that question. To study English? Uh, okay, I see. Yeah, I, don't, I can't answer. I don't know what they ask for in Germany, but and decent English, I'm not sure what you mean by that. C1 should be enough. Anastasia, this is a very common question. Can you use phrasal verbs in the writing task? Yes, you can. Phrasal verbs are like all vocabulary. You have more formal phrasal verbs and more informal phrasal verbs. In an essay, you can use formal phrasal verbs, like um, uh, to carry out an experiment, for example. There are certain phrasal verbs which are more informal and certain phrasal verbs which are more formal. So yes, you can. I know some teachers say you can't, but you can. It's okay to use phrasal verbs in your essays. Uh, and of course, in your if it's a letter to an informal, uh, an informal letter to a friend, you can use pretty much all of the phrasal verbs. So yes. But be careful. You should know. You need to know the register, so the level of formality, which is appropriate. Um, uh, greetings from Czechia. Good to have you. Could I ask you to calculate the mark 
uh, how to calculate. Yeah, there are websites for that. Or there's, there's a. I'll put that in the link later. Calculate the mark in sample tests. Um, if I forget, Philip, can you you can send me a message later because uh, you can send it when the when the video is uploaded. Late uploaded. Yeah, as Romelia says, she's answering Anastasia's questions, certain ones. Okay, Roman, you got the B2, now you're going for C1, wow. Um, will, the, will the time be visible during the exam? Do you have to bring a risk? There should be a, a clock on the wall if you're doing the paper-based exam. If you're doing the computer-based exam, you will have the, a countdown. You'll, you'll see the time counting down. So in the reading and use of English, it starts at 90 minutes and then counts down. And you'll get a notification when you, I think it's when you have 15 minutes and then five minutes. But you can't take a watch. Yeah, so um, uh, what do you recommend for increase improving speaking skills if if we don't have anyone to, for talking? Well, first of all, you can always find someone to practice speaking. Again, you have my free Telegram groups. There, are, I think we have over 2,000 members now. So you can join one of those. You can find other people who are preparing for the same exam. You can practice with them. If not, you can practice on your own. Talk to yourself. Record yourself doing the speaking paper. Uh, just talk, that's use the technology we have. Record yourself and listen back. Um, of course, it's better if you have someone to talk um, to talk to. But talk to yourself. Talk to your pet. Talk to your dog or cat. Or talk to your, the mirror. Uh, record yourself. I always recommend you record yourself. It's horrible when you. I know. <laughs> I, I hate watching my YouTube videos, but it's even worse when you're speaking in a second language. But um, Record yourself and listen, either audio or video, but listen to yourself. You, you, what you hear in your head is different to how it sounds uh, out loud. Greetings from Turkey, Aka. Thank you, Alexei from you know, Russia. What kind of certificate do you find the best of all? I, I guess you mean what exam? Well, Cambridge exams are the most prestigious, I think. And the C2 proficiency is the highest level, so it's the most prestigious. Why do we have so many phrasal verbs? I don't know. For As an English teacher, Remo, it's frustrating because they're difficult to teach. Um, and we don't, as native English speakers, we don't think about them until we need to teach them. But we just use them like all vocabulary. You should learn. I have many videos on phrasal verbs. I have a playlist on phrasal verbs. Really, you should learn phrasal verbs um, as chunks, not as individual words, as chunks of vocabulary. So it's two or three words together. I think somebody, it's just gone, but somebody was asking about my big tip before the exam. Uh, the biggest tip, if you don't know already, but make sure you know, I, I'm going to go on to some more specific tips in a moment to, for, before the exam. Make sure you know exactly what you have to do in each part of the exam, not each paper, each part. So re the reading and use of English for the advanced, for example, has eight parts. You must know exactly what you what is expected of you for each part. Also, the time management is extremely important. I'm going to speak about time management. You cannot dedicate the same amount of time to each part. I'll explain that in a moment. But um, if, if you haven't prepared, if you don't know the format of the exam very well, and you have the exam in the next, or tomorrow, or in the next couple of days, don't worry about learning vocabulary or grammar now. It's too late for that. Just make sure you know the format very well. You don't want any surprises. When you open the exam paper, you don't want any surprises. Or when you take the speaking exam and they ask you a question or you, there's a task you, you don't know. You watch the, um, I, I have a couple, but there are others of um, YouTube videos of other people taking the exam. Um, that's the best way of the, the speaking paper, of course, but it really gets to know the exam. It's the biggest tip, but there are others I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, Maria, is it best to have a script for the speaker? Well, you, I guess you mean like learning by heart what you're going to say. Well, you can't because you can't. You don't know what the questions will be. Maybe if you're, I don't know which exam you're preparing for. Um, you can prepare the, prepare the first two questions maybe, but it shouldn't sound like you're reading or or it's rehearsed. It should sound natural and fluent. Um, so probably not. You just well, you can't have a script. You don't know what the questions are going to be. Okay, Serbia, CAE in September. Okay, Lara, Romania. Um, 
what do you think are possible topics for the oral exams? Well, the typical ones are the environment, climate change, uh, education, technology, social issues. Uh, again, it's, it's difficult to prepare for one particular topic because there are many, it could be many, but the environment and technology and education, I think they are the three biggest topics in the exam in general, not just the speaking, in the writing, in the use of English, everything, listening. Yeah, good luck to everyone, Moldova. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, Andre, Andre, the Write and Improve website. Yeah, I'd like other people who have, because I've had mixed feedback about the Write and Improve website. If anyone else has on this chat has t has used Write and Improve, maybe you can reply to Andre, your experiences. Um, Marta, favorite idiom or phrasal verb? That, uh, that's for another video, I guess. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but uh, what would you recommend? improve your use of English level for C2 exam. Depends how much time you have, but to improve it, because use of English is grammar and vocabulary, basically. So you need to study all the grammar, go, revise all the, the grammar, and just continuously learn new vocabulary. Surround yourself with English. So watch films, read books, read articles, listen to podcasts, radio, but take notes. Take Have a, a vocabulary or an exam notebook so you're proactively expanding your vocabulary because you need as much vocabulary as possible so be proactive um, don't be passive yeah knowing the format is extremely important uh, thank you I'm, I'm, some nice comments on here if i don't understand some words should i go for vocabulary each time Constantine, i don't i don't know what you mean if you don't under, understand a word word you should try to infer the word from the context sometimes you don't need to understand every word in the reading for example you don't you don't need to understand every word the context should be enough um so yeah the, the context to infer meaning you should practice inferring meaning so you should be just practicing mario hi uh hanley hi in the writing task is essay plus one more writing task I think you should prepare for every type. If you have time, you should prepare for every writing, for part two of the writing. If you have very limited time, then preparing for two of them, you're guaranteed that one of them will appear. But if you have time, it's much better to, pr to practice all of them. Because you, if you only prepare for two, it's very risky because maybe you don't like the topics. Or, and if you only have one option, you're limiting yourself. Um, so. Definitely, you should pre prepare for all of them if you have time. Um, B2 for schools is like the B2 first. It's just the, the topics are more suitable for younger people. That's the only difference as far as I know. Uh, Remo, my accent is uh, standard Southern British English. So I was born in London, but I grew up in Cambridgeshire, where I am now. But I've lived in Spain for many years. Uh, so it's I always say there there is no such thing as a neutral English language, but it's my accent is basically the standard British English that you see in the phonetic symbols at the back of exercise books, those phonetic symbols. So, for example, I say bath, not bath or bath. That's the typical difference, the bath. Are. Yeah, TV series, Florian, is very useful. Again, because you're preparing for an exam, just be proactive and take notes of expressions and vocabulary and maybe grammar structures you hear. If you're just learning English in general, you can just enjoy the, the series and sort of passively improve your, your level. But because you you have a specific objective, you need to be more organized and uh, studious, really organized and take notes of everything, everything new. Um, when I practice with myself to improve my speaking, because the only issue I face is that nobody is there to correct my pronunciation. It's very difficult. Yeah, you, it's very useful. This is something I was going to speak about later, but I'll, um, I'll talk about it now because the next question is related. In my Patreon assistance, is there only an option for help in writing or speaking as well? The writing and the speaking is the most, well, the speaking is the most difficult. The writing is also difficult, but those two are the most difficult tasks or um, skills to improve on your own. The others you can do with self-study, but it's really beneficial to get feedback from a teacher 
especially a teacher who has experience with the Cambridge English exams. Again, I'm not selling my services here, but this is this is just true. I have this exam academy, which um, Ra, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry, he's asking about where you have two options. You have the 12 euro 50 option where you get you join the Telegram group, the community, and you get, as I said, a minimum of three workshops per week. Uh, you, you join the group and we do some speaking practice, also a lot of exam tips. It, then you have the 25 euro option where you get all of that. So you get the Telegram group and the speaking uh, workshops, but you get um, writing corrections too from by me, or you can choose from me. I, I correct your writings or Frank Cariso is an exam expert. He has a lot of knowledge about the exams. So that's an option. Again, I'll put the link later in the, the but in general, how to improve, you need the best way is to get feedback from from a teacher really it's tough and i don't want i wish i had an easier i mean you can hopefully you have all downloaded the um, official cambridge or you have a handbook for the b2 first so there's a b2 first handbook c1 advanced handbook and a c2 proficiency handbook you can download those for free on the cambridge english website and they give you lots of information and lots of help about the exams and you have sample papers there. But the most valuable part of that handbook is that you have um, writing tasks and example writing um, uh, answers, uh, writing um, compositions for, by candidates and you have examiner comments. That's really useful. So I definitely recommend that you download these handbooks from the, the website. But again, you really need a, it helps to have feedback it's not essential you can still pass the exam without feedback from a teacher but it's very useful okay lucy bonjour <laughs> taking i mean i'll be in france next week taking the cpe next thursday i'm very nervous about the written task use of english your channel is ah, incred incredibly helpful thanks tips for the reading yeah i'm going to go on to some tips for the reading and use of english in a moment thank you dimitro tai tai uh, i'm good at speaking although i couldn't get the highest marks in reading use of english paper Okay, so a few people are asking about the about the reading and use of English. Laura is asking about the cat's name. The cat's name is Bimba, and the dog's name is Amy. I think everybody knows Amy, right? Uh, I've tried write and improve, and I had the same problem. Okay, yeah. Okay, getting a few questions about the about the reading and use of English. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I know there's some other questions about the writing. I have videos, I have videos about every part basically, but um, so you can go back and look at those. But okay, the reading and use of English for the, well, for the C1 advanced, you have eight parts. For the B2 first and C2 proficiency, you have seven parts. For the C2, <laughs> for the C1 advanced and the C2 proficiency, you have 90 minutes. Um, for the B2 first, you have 75 minutes. Okay, that's the basic information. What's important is time management. People usually struggle to complete all the tasks within the 90 minutes or the 75 minutes. So you, hopefully you, you've all practiced this or you, you will practice this. But basically the first four parts of the exam, parts one, two, three, and four are use of English. Technically part one is reading, but for study purposes, I think it's better to talk about it as use of English. And you can do parts one, two, and three, whether it's B2 first, C1 advanced, or C2 proficiency, you can do parts one, two, and three in 15 minutes in total. You should be able to do it in those three parts in 15 minutes, so five minutes each. You need to practice those papers, doing them in about five minutes each. Part four, which is the keyword uh, transformation, you will need more time. You'll need about 12 minutes. About, I know that sounds quite specific, but um, 12 minutes because it's, there are six questions. They're quite difficult and you'll need time. It's all difficult, but this one is particularly difficult. So if you can dedicate two minutes to each question, more or less, some questions will need 30 seconds. Some questions will need three minutes, but in total, so five minutes for part one, five minutes for part two, five minutes for part three, about, let's say between 10 and 15 minutes for part four. So that will leave you for the um, C1 advanced and C2 proficiency, that will leave you one hour for the reading. The, the C1 advanced, the four reading parts, 
C2 proficiency, it's three reading parts. And then the B2 first, it's three reading parts and you have less time. But basically the, the important thing is, the important thing to know is that you need more time for the reading parts. People who are, are unprepared often have problems here because they start with the, in, in order, they do the, the, the reading and use of English in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they think, oh, this is easy. I'm, I'm going really quickly. I'm, I'm doing it. You know, it only took me 10 minutes to do part one and 10 minutes to do. I have plenty of time. And then they get to the reading parts and they realize, uh oh, I needed more time for the reading parts and they don't have time to finish. That's a big mistake. You all know that hopefully already, but you know it now. Um, so, yeah, make sure you leave enough time for the reading. Another good tip for, for the reading and use of English. You have an hour and a half for the C1 advanced C2 proficiency. You don't have to start at part one. Of course, when you open the paper, you'll see part one to first, but you can start with any part you, you like. And I usually recommend you start with the reading parts. So start with part five, six, seven, and, and eight in that order, and then actually go down four, three, two, one to finish with part one. So then you have more, you're starting fresher for the, the bigger tasks. And if you are running out of time at the end, which many people do, then you can uh, quickly do the multiple choice. I mean, it's not ideal. Hopefully, you'll have time to think about your answers. But if you literally have two seconds, uh, well, two seconds, two minutes, you can just choose, you know, read it quickly and just choose quite quickly the multiple choice. You can't read long texts quickly and then you, you, you just need more time for the reading. So that's that's very important. And in general, how to prepare for the reading, you need to read. Uh, ideally, reading Cambridge tasks, because they, you know, they, you get a feel for the type of tasks you have to do. But reading BBC articles, the, the Guardian articles, a lot of the reading tasks in the exams are adap adapted from Guardian, the English newspaper or British English, British newspaper, The Guardian. Uh, so if you read those, you, you're getting a feel for the type the type of um, articles, not necessarily current news because the exams don't, so the war in Ukraine, Brexit, um, things like that, are probably not so useful, be more sort of general articles. So fine. And another big tip I give, don't own, don't exclusively read texts or articles that you find interesting. You need to force yourself to read uh, articles that you maybe you wouldn't usually read um, because you need to expand your vocabulary and also you need to practice reading things that maybe you don't find interesting because in the exam a lot of the articles are quite boring but you need to stay focused you need to be extremely focused throughout the exam so practice reading boring articles or things you're not really interested in but the Time management is extremely important for the reading and use of English. So practice that as much as possible. Um, I'm sorry I can't read all your messages. I'll try to read them later if I can. Um, hopefully you're chatting amongst yourself. Well, Marta, I've just seen how to feel more confident while speaking. Stress makes me nervous. Everybody gets nervous in the speaking paper, really. There are a few, like 1% of the population, for some reason, they don't get nervous. Um, but most people do. You have to accept that you will be nervous. Nerves are not, it's horrible to feel nervous. It's a horrible situation. But you, if you just accept that it's part of the experience. But the problem is when it, the nerves are so overwhelming that they hinder your performance or they, they make you, your performance, you, you don't demonstrate your level as well as you could. Uh, and again, the only real way to to improve that is by practicing, practice, 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 and practice in stressful situations. Unfortunately, I made a video quite recently that like, leave your comfort zone. It's, I know it's it's a horrible tip, but um, it's what you have to do. Uh, it's the only way, really. I'm not a psychologist, but from, through my own personal experience, I'm an introvert. I I get very I used to get very nervous, um, you know, before classes, before speaking in public. But I've done it so many times that you know it gets easier with time. It really does. Um, you learn just to become sort of a bit of an actor, really. You, you, 
you have to fake it till you make it. Um, how to mail, uh, no, sorry, what is the difference between B2 first and B2 for schools? Somebody asked that before. It's just the topics are different. The, the topics for B2 for schools are more suitable for younger people. Yeah, Romelia, good. Thank you, Romelia. Romelia has, has a lot of experience with these exams, so I suggest people pay attention to Romelia, Romelia's messages. She knows what she's talking about. Um, can, I, can I use the compositions from the handbook as templates? Uh, you can take some of the expressions of vocabulary, but I wouldn't use them as templates. I mean, the structure, like the introduction, two body paragraphs and a conclusion, yes. Uh, how a, how a report is structured, how a proposal is structured. I should say the the compositions in the handbook are not good. <laughs> They're not necessary. Some of them are good, and you can see from the marks and the the examiner comments. Some of them are not so good. So you can learn from the bad examples as well as the good examples. But be careful of copying the bad examples. Make sure you read the examiner comments and the marks to be sure. You know, you're, you're, none of them are perfect because they are real examples of compositions from candidates. So be careful of that. Uh, at what level of English should I be start should I be to start learning a second language? Do you mean like a second second language, a third language maybe? I don't the only danger of that is that you'll start mixing languages. So it's 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 tough. Uh, yeah, you probably want to have an advanced level before you start learning a third language. Um, I have a book on, uh, sorry, I have a video on book recommendations. Uh, again, maybe I'll link to it in the, but you can search in my YouTube channel for the book, book recommendations. Um, yeah, there are plenty of books with exam tasks, like past papers. That's the best thing you can do is do past papers. Um, check out my videos for that. For, I have made a video for B2 first, another one for C1 advanced another one for C2 proficiency. You can just search in Google. I think that's the first result that comes up. Writing and speaking is quite challenging. I know I need to practice a lot. However, I'm always confused when I have, so this is Uptown JK, uh, when I have to use English. Please tell, how, tell us how effective methods to study and learn English. Um, well, that's a big question. If you're talking about for the exam, then do sample papers and just, for the speaking and, Writing, as I said before, it, it's very helpful to have feedback, to get feedback. Again, I really don't want this to be me selling my e exam academy. I, th I think it's a very good deal because you, you know, for quite little money, you get a lot of content, a lot of help. But if you want feedback from teachers, uh, Frank and I are there to, to give feedback on your writing and some speaking. We, I try to give you as as many opportunities to speak as possible. Janko, yeah, hopefully, thank you. I'm glad you find it useful. I know it's a lot of information. This video should be saved and come up automatically as a as a video later, if everything goes well. Hopefully that's the way it goes. Constantine, good, you're always reading Guardian articles. That's very good. General issues, maybe even football. No, not so much on football. They try to avoid any uh, controversial issues. It gets people too emotional, I think. My favorite idiom, um, oh, I don't know, put me on the spot. I'll make a video about my favorite idiom, idioms. I need another. Um, there's a good one, which I like, it's called, it's Bob's your uncle, Bob's your uncle. So when when we say Bob's your uncle, it means, uh, means they are. Um, so when you're doing something and you, you get the result, so you're doing something difficult or, or you're explaining something to someone. You say, Bob's your uncle. And that's very strange. I don't know why we say Bob's your uncle. I need to research that. Um, so it's just like you're doing something and then Bob's your uncle. There it is. There's the result. I'll make a video to explain that better. But Bob's your uncle or you can search for it now. I like it because Bob, I had a, I had an uncle called Robert, which is uh, the, the diminutive is Bob. So Bob was really my uncle. But the, the idiom is, is strange. Bob's your uncle. Uh, about writing, I feel that I feel that they want to show off by putting together the longest sentence possible while using pompous vocabulary. That's what, yeah. No, it's it has to be suitable. Yeah, I understand. Maybe that's a problem with writing and prove. Um, I not the longest sentence possible. It should be easy to read. It should flow nicely. It's good to include complex sentences. So a complex sentence is a sentence which contains 
two clauses. So a clause, a clause is a uh, any phrase or any words group of words which includes a subject and a verb and an object. I think. Well, it, it, so a complex sentence has two at least two clauses. So they don't have to be really long. In fact, they shouldn't be really long, but it should be. It should flow well. So yeah, you, they do want to see a range of appropriate and suitable vocabulary, uh, sensitive to the task, um, and a range of vocabulary. So you have to be consciously trying to include um, vocabulary. Uh, pronunciation, uh, yes. Well, the shadowing technique is a good one. I'm not an expert on. I'm not. A, I don't specialize in pronunciation, but the shadowing technique is good. Um, uh, to, to, which is imitating like uh, native speakers or not necessarily native speakers, just good English speakers um, from TV series or, or YouTube videos, just literally repeating what they say and record yourself, record yourself speaking so you can hear yourself. Read read books out loud or articles out loud recording yourself. It's horrible, I know, but that's the best way to do it. Yeah, good question, Alex. Can every native speaker pass the C2 exam? And if not, which level do you think most native speakers? Yes, they can. They, the problem, the only reason they wouldn't is if they're not prepared and they don't understand what they would have to do. Um, but they should. <laughs> not every not every native speaker, no. Um, it's difficult. It's very tough. They, if, if they're not prepared, if, never, if they've never seen the, the Cambridge, the C2 proficiency exam before, they would find it difficult. Um, Mariah is asking, what do they look for in the C2? They don't in the C1. Uh, as I said, more precise vocabulary. In the C1 advanced, in the writing, maybe on the speaking, maybe they'd accept you know, good enough or close enough. But the C2, it has you have to use the perfect word, not just good enough. There are other things. I mean, your um, fluency less hesitation when speaking, everything just at a higher level, a more advanced vocabulary, more advanced grammar. And of course, the listening tasks are more difficult, the re reading and use of English, more difficult. Um, I did make a video on the C CAE versus CPE. So check it. It's, it seems I always say this, but I've made lots of videos on this now. So um, check check them out. Uh, Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the people who are thanking me. Um, oh, good for your son, Antonio. That's great. From Cor Cordoba. I want to thank you for. Oh, thank you very. I really appreciate this. Uh, do you teach the ones for the ones who are from other countries in Zoom or using uh, in Zoom? Yeah, on, on through the Patreon group. I we teach through Zoom. Zoom, and there are people from all over the world. Uh, the pronunciation. Good question, David or David. How important is pronunciation in the speaking part? Um, not as important as most people seem to think. It's as long as you are understandable, as long as your pronunciation is intelligible, um, it's not a big problem. Your accent, if you have a strong Spanish accent or Italian accent, Chinese accent, French accent, as long as the, it, it's not important, as long as the examiner can understand you. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, it is, a, they do mark it. It's one of the criterion that the examiners mark. So it's important, but I think some people worry too much about it. And you can use American English pronunciation or British, well, pronunciation, British English pronunciation. They're both accepted, but you must try to be consistent um, with your pronunciation. If you start mixing American and British, it, it's not a big problem, but it could be a little bit confusing. Uh, I was speaking, well, the, you're asking for the speaking part for B2. It's the same for all of the, it's the discussion part. The last part of the speaking paper is the discussion. That's the night, that's the best part of the speaking paper because you, you can just have a, well, relax, maybe not, but have a nice conversation with your partner. Uh, two big tips I give for any of the collaborative tasks is to keep your contributions short. Don't, they should not be monologues. It's interaction is very important. The, the biggest mistake that a lot of students make is they speak for two minutes answering the question and then say to their partner, what do you think? 
that's not an interaction. That's not a discussion. That's a monologue. They should not be monologues. You should be passing the ball, going backwards and forwards regularly. So you must include your partner. And if your partner is talking too much, you must be prepared to interrupt them politely um, because it's your exam too. You have to, you need the opportunity to, to, to demonstrate your level. Um, but part four is, yeah, it's the best part of a speaking paper. It's where you can really just demonstrate, just have a nice conversation with your partner, hopefully. I've never been an, an examiner. No, I was thinking it, somebody suggested a, another examiner I know asked me if I would like to prepare to be an examiner and maybe in the future. But no, that's important. I have a lot of knowledge about the exams, but I'm not an examiner. Um, if you join the exam academy, you will have access to an examiner. So with me and an, uh, an examiner there, but yeah, I, I, I know the exams very well, but I'm not an examiner. I've, I speak to an examiner regularly. So I, if I have any doubts, I get their information. Uh, hi, Argentina. I'm glad you like Sedin. I've never heard that name before, but thank you. Um, ah, thank you, Luciana. It's good. Ah, I've seen your comments before, Luciana. Thank you. It's good. To you. Nice, nice of you to join, even though it's so early. Um, Okay, uh, how can we improve phrasal verbs? Like any vocabulary. I think that's a big, again, I have a lot of videos on phrasal verbs. Check them out in my playlist. I'm not selling them. I'm not I'm not trying to sell my, my videos. It, it doesn't make a big difference to me, to be honest. One or two views <laughs> doesn't make a difference. But um, I give a lot of help on there. But um, I think people see phrasal verbs as this different vocabulary that you have to learn. It's not. It's the same as other vocabulary. You can learn it in the same way. Just learn learn them as chunks. Just because there are two parts, there are two words. I think that confuses people because you have and they're illogical when you look at the two words. But if you just look at the meaning as the you know the chunk of vocabulary, so it could be two or three part phrasal verbs. Just learn it in context. Always context, context, context. It's so important. You need to learn the context. You need to learn vocabulary in context and come up with your own examples. Again, if you've seen my videos, emotional connection helps. So think of real, use people you know and love or situations connected to you in your examples that they will help you remember. But like with any vocabulary, really. Uh, how to improve my skills to understand different accents as they're quite common. Watch lots of different YouTube videos, different um, different accents, different films and series. I think a lot of people prefer British English, so they only watch British English videos, or they prefer American English, they only watch American English videos. That's bad. That's a mistake. You should be. You need to be, expose yourself to the Scottish accent, the New York accent, the California accent, the Manchester accent, London accent, Australian accent, all of them. Expose yourself to as many accents as possible. The problem is you start to train your ear to one particular accent, and that's great. You understand that accent very well, but you don't understand the other accents. Uh, do you have any information? Is there any way somehow to take exam candidates? Well, it's problematic at the moment. I don't know. In Russia, the problem is paying um, for anything, any service, obviously, in Russia. So you can join my Telegram group the free telegram group but um so i have free telegram groups which just students sharing knowledge getting to know each other helping each other you have the, the exam academy through patreon which is paid but i don't know at the moment in russia i don't know how you can pay okay david good question if you write if you exceed the word length for the writing paper the writing parts so that david is says 260 that's for the advanced or yeah the advanced uh, whatever it is, whatever exam, it's okay. It's not a word limit. It's a word guide. Um, so if you write less than the word guide or, or more, it's not a problem. You don't get marks automatically subtracted. The, the problem is if you include irrelevant information or if you haven't completed the task. If, if you use less than the, the words, um, the word guide, you probably haven't completed the task. And if you've written more, it's possible that you're included in relevant information, but it, you don't lose marks. 
specifically for write, for exceeding the word length. But you don't want to write. You, you should practice with trying to get it as close to the word length as possible because um, it demonstrates that you can be concise. You can present your ideas in, in less words. So, yeah. Okay, Romelia, thank you for helping out. Tanya, for those of you who are taking... Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Uh, yeah, again, check out Fabian. Check out my video on book recommendations. I have one for each level. Yeah, Luciana, you can watch the video later. Um, okay, I do want to... Oh, no, sorry, Marinka, I don't have any insider information. I have no idea what's happening regarding the exams in Russia. Uh, yeah. JV, why give these exams so short time, such short time for all of the tasks? No, it's not normal in real life. These exams do not represent real life. That's a fact. I don't work for Cambridge, so I can say this. They're not perfect. These exams, they need to have some kind of time limit because they can't go on forever, of course. And it does test you, your ability to express yourself in less time. Um, yeah, maybe it's not fair. I think for many, some people just think quicker and it's a better for them but all exams have time limits right whether you're taking a, a maths exam history exam but yeah i think it's especially with the speaking paper i think it's unfair i've said this in my videos i think for certain people introverts or people who just need more time to gather their thoughts before they speak it doesn't have anything to do with their english level it's just that they're not they don't have that personality uh, not more i can say i'm sorry Uh, Mariah has learned asking about part two of the reading and use of English. That's a tricky one. Yeah. Um, the good news about part two of the reading and use of English, this is the, the gap fill. It's called the open close test. So you have um, a text with gaps, but no options. There are no multiple choice options. The good news is you know the words. You will know all of the words. They're not testing your vocabulary. They're testing your grammar. So you need to pay attention to what's around the gap. That's very important. Um, and really, again, this is a very simple tip, but the more you practice, the more sample papers you do, the easier it gets. I remember years ago when I first started um, helping people with this exam, my first experiences with this, these exams, this was my, the most difficult part for me. Sometimes I thought, I, what is this word? I, I couldn't think. Uh, it was a very obvious word. I think the, the first word I couldn't get was because because I didn't, but the more even I practice, the easier it gets. Now I can do it with, without any problems, but you just develop an instinct if, if you practice a lot. Um, it's a tough one, yeah, but uh, it's, you know the words, so you have to think about the grammar, focus on the grammar, not the vocabulary. It's not a test of the vocabulary. The vocabulary is important too, but the grammar is the most important in that part. Oh, Mario, I'm glad you can understand me well. Thank you, English with Cami. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Andrea, I've just answered that question. I guess you just heard it. Uh, if I, I'll take my C2 exam on Tuesday. Any piece of advice? Well, yep, all the advice I've given in, in my videos. Um, I will talk about... I struggle with the Indian accent, Yuji. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of colleagues. Yeah, that's... Again, you just... The more you expose yourself to one accent, the more you, you get used to it. Uh, what is your opinion? The easiest writing on part two, part two of the C1, it's yeah, basically the same, more or less. Uh, depends on the person. Some people prefer the report or proposal because the structure is very clear, but that doesn't give you much room for, uh, doesn't give you a lot of flexibility for vocabulary and um, grammar. I think the review and the letter give you more more flexibility, more room for creativity. And some people don't want room for creativity. They just want structure. So probably the report or the proposals are the easier. Easier in that you don't need to think too much. You just know you need a title, you need an introduction with a heading. You need the, a title for the first section, the second section, and a conclusion. But um, as I said, it's more difficult to really impress the examiner in those parts, I think. I love listening to music, Tai Tai, yeah, to, to help with my Spanish, for example. I think you can learn, again, paying attention. Be careful because there is a lot of bad grammar in pop and rock songs. 
So as long as you don't just learn bad grammar, but you can learn the vocabulary and, and some grammar. And I'll, yeah, thank you, Manuel, for helping. Okay, in try and keep it in English, Risto. <laughs> yeah, do a report or a proposal. As my hi, Miriam. I'm doing great. I hope you are too. Do you have any materials about teaching techniques? Um, not on me at the moment. If you're a teacher, I do recommend that the the teacher's handbook. I, I recommend students and teachers download that handbook from the. If you're talking about this Cambridge exams, in particular. Uh, Anika, I don't know how to say your name, sorry. Um, yeah, that, that's the best material for the exam preparation. Antonio, which writing part do you think is easier for part? Okay, just answered that, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, again, I don't know your Ria. Good. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the Patreon group. Uh, hi from Salvador. Hi, Antonio. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Manuel. Yeah, I'll pass the link later. I can't do it now, I don't think. Some people probably could, but I'm not that good. Well, maybe I... You can you can find the um, the links to my free Telegram groups in and, and my exam academy in any of my other videos on the Cambridge exams. They're in the description of any of my, of all of my, I think all of them, all of my other Cambridge exam specific videos. I will put, put the put them in the description of this video when it's uploaded later as a video. Um, so come back for that later. I know I should be better at technology than this, but um, I'm not, I'm too old. It's my excuse. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, David. Uh, do you mean like bullet points? Um, maybe in a report or a proposal, but it's not a good idea. I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's okay for a report or a proposal, but you should be expressing your ideas in word form like um using linkers cohesive devices and clauses uh, pr relative pronouns to express your ideas yes um hannah you should it's not compulsory it's not obligatory but for a report and proposal you should put a title and then sub headings for each section which includes an introduction a conclusion or the conclusion could be recommendation or proposal but um you do need headings for each section a piece of advice to stand out in the speaking c1 just try to i mean i could say use impressive adjectives you know i've made lots of videos with adjectives adverbs lots of vocabulary of course that's great but it's very difficult to do that in the exam so i think the best way to stand out is just to try to relax and speak as fluently as possible and confidently and hopefully the, the impressive vocabulary will pop up naturally the biggest mistake well not the biggest one of the mistakes i notice students make is when they're they're like doing the long turn where they speak on their own for one minute well your c1 it's one minute c2 it's two minutes and they're trying to think of uh, impressive vocabulary and that interrupts their train of thought and then they hit a wall or their mind goes blank and then that's a disaster so i think you should just stay in the zone stay just focus on the content you're saying and hopefully the, the vocabulary will come up naturally but the moment you try to actively look for vocabulary it interrupts your train of thought and it's very difficult to continue then it's difficult to to uh, to continue <laughs> see it's happened to me because i'm reading it's interrupted my train of thought it's difficult to continue speaking fluently so just stay in the zone and other little tips like make eye contact body language and eye contact smile maybe i know that sounds insignificant when you're look, talking about your um, english level but it demonstrates um, that you're confident and body language is important so when you're speaking to the examiner look at the examiner, the interlocutor, in the eye. When you're speaking to your partner, turn, face them, nod when they're nod and smile when it's when. I think that really creates a good impression. It's natural. It should be natural. When you're relaxed, it comes naturally. Um, okay, sorry, I'm reading a few more. Hello, everyone. That's sending messages, by the way. Hi. Okay, Alice. Thank you. What's your opinion about dogma teaching? Yeah, I think that's great. Dogma, that's more natural. It's kind of like a natural approach. It's a lot of conversation. 
I think depending on your level, sort of anything above upper intermediate, dogma teachings, just speaking conversation, obviously the teacher is correcting. I think it's great. I think it's if if you're not preparing for an exam, it's the best, or one of the best methods, in my opinion, because I think at a higher levels just need the opportunity to speak and be corrected. How do teachers verify that you have a specific language level, such as writings and mediations? Uh, it's just the, the level of grammar and vocabulary you use. That like higher level vocabulary is basically the less common vocabulary. It's not the uh, and voc and grammar. It's sort of third conditionals, mixed conditionals, inversion. It's everything, really. It's everything. Um, but yeah, using high level of vocabulary and, and grammar. Yeah, David, the title is optional, but I recommend you put a title. It doesn't have to be very imaginative or creative. Just it, with the reports and proposals, you should, it's better to include a title. So it, it, it's quite, I think some people get quite stressed. Is my, is my title creative enough? Is it, what should I write? Just spend 30 seconds thinking of a title and write it and then forget about it. It's, yeah, you, you don't want to waste time. Um, to correct a mistake in the writing, just cross it out neatly and then write it again, either above. Just make sure it's it's legible so the the, teach, the examiners can read it clearly. Um, so just make it clear, a nice line and just not scrib scribbling out. If they cross it out, they won't pay, even if they can read it, they won't pay attention to it. Uh, writing part, we have to write an essay, compulsory, yep, and another type of choice, article, report, review, letter. Yeah, that's for the C2 proficiency. Yeah, which one would you say is the easiest? Yeah, as we spoke about that earlier. Depends on the person. Uh, report, people tend to like reports, but I think if you want to really impress the examiner, I would choose an article or a review. You have more um, room for creativity and it's you make it more vocab, wider range of voc vocabulary. You can impress the examiner more with a, a report or a review. Okay, yeah, other people are answering the question, so that's good, thank you. Are you welcome, Alice? I've never vis visited Sri Lanka, I would love to. Uh, I got 95%, for example, I got 95% of your address currently. It was something so far away to years ago, watching and listening over and over. Okay, great, where are you from? Uh, I'm from England, I was born in England, grew up in England, but I've been living in Spain for 20 years. I'm in England at the moment, visiting my parents. I had a wedding last year. It's all about hard work. Yes, <laughs> you've nailed it, Angela. You have to put the hard work in. There are no shortcuts. I can give you all these tips, but at, at the end of the day, it's up to you to go and put the work in and really study. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because it's about doing the work. Emilio, hello, I just passed the B2, B1, I'm going for B2, good. I'd like to get some advice for, for my new exciting school. Uh, yeah, just surround yourself with English, do many sample papers, make sure you know the exams as well as possible. Uh, two weeks till your exam. Remember, I have lots of videos on this, so I, I, I'm going to, I want to speak a bit about the writing now before we finish, because we're coming to an end. I have been to Tenerife, Tenerife. Um, thanks, just arrived here. Ah, okay, Angela, you've missed a lot of it, but it will come up later. Um, from India, Kishore, okay, Emilio, being person. Yeah, so I, before, because I want to make sure I speak about the writing before we finish, because the time management is very important in the writing. And a big mistake that people make is that they just start writing immediately. So they think, you know, maybe they spend two minutes thinking about what they're going to write, and then they start writing. And then they have to start crossing things out because they've made mistakes or they didn't they want to change things so i recommend for the writing that you spend 15 minutes planning i know that seems excessive because you okay i should mention you have two parts in the writing so you, you need to dedicate about 45 minutes to each part remember you have a, an essay which is compulsory it's obligatory first and then the part two you have options but you should dedicate about 45 minutes to each part because it's an hour and a half in total so within those 45 minutes, you should, in my opinion, dedicate 15 minutes to planning. So decide how you're going to structure your, your composition, what you're going to put in the introduction, what you're going to put in the first paragraph, second paragraph, what you're going to put in the conclusion. 
even think about where you can include inversion, where you can include maybe a passive voice uh, example, where you can include the uh, a, a conditional sentence, for example. Uh, how, what kind of cohesive devices? So linkers, like, however, nevertheless, furthermore, those kind of things. Fifteen minutes. So then, you, you need about twenty-five minutes just to write the composition, which should be quite easy because you've spent so much time preparing, planning. So you know what what content to put in each paragraph. So fifteen minutes planning, twenty-five minutes writing. Five minutes at the end, also very important to check, to read it again and check you haven't made mistakes. I correct a lot of writings and a lot of the writings I correct, the mistakes that my students make, it's because they're not, they know, they, they could have corrected themselves. The, the little slips that they weren't concentrating, they uh, could literally be typos or just writing too quickly. Um, and that's frustrating because they know what is correct, but they just didn't give themselves five minutes at the end to go back and check. It's very difficult because 45 minutes is not a lot of time, but the more time you spend preparing, the the less time you need writing. So planning, planning is very important. Um, I wanted to make sure I, I got that in before we finish, but um, let's just have a look at a few more questions. That's Amy barking, I think. Although my sister's dog here is, my sister's dog is here too. So maybe it's her dog. Uh, being, yeah. Uh, hi Ben, I have a decent B2 to C1 level of English regarding reading and listening, but I struggle with speaking. Yeah, what would you suggest to improve speaking? Again, you can join my free Telegram group where there are lots of people there that will be happy to practice speaking with you. Find somebody to practice with. If you can't find anyone to practice with, speak to your dog, your cat, your bird, speak, speak to yourself in the mirror, record yourself. As I said before, I've, I've given it this um i've given this advice earlier but as i said nowadays with facebook with all social media the telegram groups it's there's it's not there's no excuse really you, you can always find someone to speak to there are free facebook groups free telegram groups um so yeah you you, you should be able to find someone um, I don't think there's an excuse these days. You you can find someone to speak with. The problem is getting feedback from a professional or from a, a, a teacher. Again, the solution I've found, hopefully, I mean, is the the exam academy through Patreon. So again, I'll share the link. Again, the links are on my other Cambridge exam videos if you want to find them. Uh, Kishore, good to see you. Uh, Manuel, you're from Tenerife. Tenerife, Tenerife. I live here, grew up here in most part of my life. Okay, lovely place to live. Maria, I haven't been to Brazil. I'd love to go to Brazil. I went to Argentina and Mexico, but I didn't have the opportunity. My plan was to go back to South America and visit Brazil, but life gets in the way. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, as John Lennon said. Es Ezequiel, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but so essentially I need to develop strategies and focus on grammar. Uh, develop strategies definitely for each part. Um, uh, yeah, focus on grammar, but focus on vocabulary, focus on everything, really. it's The exam tests all of the skills. So you need to be able to, you need time. That's why I recommend you need time to prepare. This is not something you can prepare for in a week or two weeks. You need at least two months. I know some of you have your exams very soon, so I don't want to scare you. It's still possible to pass the exam without preparing, but it's you're making your life much more difficult. So... Yeah, focus on the grammar, revise all, all the grammar, wherever, your own notes if possible, but you know you can find so many resources on the internet now. But also expand your vocabulary, idioms, phrasal verbs, fixed expressions, adjectives, adverbs, all these kind of things. It, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like it's a lot to do, but if you do it in a systematic, organized way, just spend some time every day or five or six days of the week dedicated to one of the skills over time you will find it you're, you're getting more and more prepared so um angela i gave lots of tips for the use of english at the beginning uh, i don't want to repeat myself because a lot of people so you will see you can watch this video again later um time management is very important and just expanding your vocabulary and revising the grammar and practicing doing sample papers lots of sample papers um, Life gets in the way. 
Oh, you're originally from Germany. Okay, right. I'm really happy to hear that my video has helped. I love love to hear that. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Um, I'm just going to check my notes to make sure there wasn't anything else. Uh, just yeah, because you have a lot of you have your exams coming up very soon. Um, the week before the exam, you're not going to be able to expand your vocabulary that much or learn that much new grammar. So focus on making sure you know the exam very well and doing sample papers again. So you know exactly what you're going to do on the day of the exam. So that's the week before the exam. The day before the exam, I've made a video on this, <laughs> but um, uh, don't study too much. I think you should relax. Um, you can visualize. I, I think this is a really good exercise. Visualize what you're going to do in the exam. So visualize walking into that the exam, opening the paper, visualize how you're going to approach each part of the exam. So just sit in silence and visualize. Maybe you're lying in bed the night before. You may not be able to sleep. Just visualize it and that that will probably send you to sleep anyway. But so you, you can so on the day of the exam, you know exactly what you're going to do. Um, make sure you get a good night's sleep, of course, the night before the exam. Make sure you know how to get to the examination center and make sure you leave with plenty of time to, to get there. You don't want the extra stress of thinking you're going to be late or not knowing how to get there. Um, yeah, and, and just be make sure you know what you need to do. It's, it's so important. You don't want any surprises. You don't want to open the paper and think, oh, I don't know how to do this part. You have time now to do that. So. I have an issue of using the word you know a lot when speak while speaking. Uh, I don't think it's a big problem, Radhika. Everybody has their crutch words, so words that we or fillers that we use a lot. Um, it fills the gap when you're thinking sometimes, or it's a nervous. Some people say like a lot. Native speakers say like, you know, like it's it's like really cold outside. Like you say, you know. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think the more you worry about it, the more nervous you get, and then you probably use it too much. Uh, yeah, I think it's good, Manuel, to dedicate different time to to different subjects. A day, one day for improving your vocabulary, another day for vo uh, for grammar, another day for pronunciation, another day for reading, another day for writing. You can if, just to be organized, to, so you have an idea of how you're going to. Um, how you're going to approach each day. Francisco, Jose, yeah, I've seen many of your comments. Good to see you here. Uh, with the, the, the class is, uh, the, the video is, the live stream, I should say, is finishing now because we've been going for over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. But you can watch watch it all again later. This will be a video, I'm pretty sure, later. So, uh, yeah, I have, yeah, I think I've covered everything. Just to summarize, for those of you who arrived late, if you have your exam in the next few days, make sure you know the format as well as possible. Make sure you do as many sample papers from now until the exam as possible. That's the best way to really get to know the exam extremely well. Um, if you can practice with another person, as I said, you have the Telegram group. You can find people to practice the speaking with for free. Um, that will help. But yeah, really the best thing you can do for those of you who have the exam next week and the next few days, just make sure you, you feel familiar with it. Um, OK, thank you, Dim Con. I, you, I played a pivotal way, role when it comes to strategy and native idioms. I'm really happy that my videos help. Um, it's very rewarding for me, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, a lot of people taking it. As I said, it's nice to have this live stream so I can see live comments. That's one thing that I really like about YouTube that you can connect because I see the, the comments in, underneath my videos. I read and reply to, I read them all and I try to reply to all of them. Recently, it's got a bit overwhelming. But that's another reason I started these uh, Telegram groups to give you the opportunity to communicate with each other, the free the free groups. And also the, the exam academy, which is not free, but it's not, not expensive. And that's where you can um, connect with me in a, in a more direct way. Okay, Ruslan, thank you. Um, Google Dictionary for learning new vocabulary expressions. Uh, dictionaries are not the best way of learning vocabulary. It's best in context. If you're talking about translating, I prefer Word Reference. Word Reference is my favorite app for translating words because you get all the different options, all the and and if 
get the sentences in context. And you also have forums, people chat about nuances in forums. Um, but yeah, uh, a dictionary is not enough because you just get the definition, especially Google online dictionary, because you know there are many translations for one word. One word can have many meanings and you need to see all the context. Okay, um, so Miriam, thank you. Oh, th okay, I'll, I'll make more motivational videos. Yeah, I, I try to mix it up with exam preparation videos, vocabulary videos, grammar videos, and some motivational videos. So I'll it's, nice, it's good to know you're staying around, Miriam, because it's not all about the Cambridge English exams. Um, let's see, Dim Kong, fingers crossed. Next live, I don't know, I mean, I have, I have a problem with my internet connection in Spain. I, I tried lives a few months ago and it wasn't good because the connection wasn't good. That's why I'm doing it now. My parents have much better internet connection, so it's good. <laughs> well, I live in I live in Asturias in Spain, which is beautiful. I, I think Cornwall is amazing, but Asturias is paradise. It really is. And Mimosa, thank you. Oh, that's lovely to know. Thank you very much. Your English, was I'm sure it wasn't terrible, but I'm glad my videos helped anyway. Thank you. That's great. Lovely to hear. Thank you. Excuse. Is it fine to use Latin phrases like ipso facto? Yes, because we use ipso facto in English. Um, just be sure that you know that we we use them in English. There are some Latin phrases we use in English, some we don't. I can't give you them all now, um, but be careful. That's all I would say. But ipso facto we use, yeah. So, yeah, with those kind of things, just be careful. If you if you have any doubt, if you're in doubt, if you're not sure, don't use it. If any doubt with those kind of expressions. Um, Victor from Ukraine, I'm really glad my you like my channel. Thank you. Yeah, go for a pass in all parts. Yeah, one thing some people ask, somebody asked me recently, you can fail um, one of the parts, one of the papers of the exam and still pass the exam. It, you, it compensates. You can have a real... You can have a disaster in the use of English, for example, and have a really get a really good score in the speaking, and that compensates. So you don't need to pass all of the exam, uh, all of the papers. Yeah, Pablo, I know what you mean with writing, but it's it's about read other writings, and um, there are lots of examples on the internet, and start you know practice and just the more pra more you practice the easier it gets to use those kind of more complex sentences okay Roslyn, is it a good idea to translate sentences from your native language to english as a way to improve active vocabulary mm, it's not ideal i think you should be it's it looks like you have a good level from the way you write i think you should be learning directly from english at the higher levels i mean everybody here i guess is b2 or above so I think you shouldn't be translating so much. I think you should just be surrounding yourself with English and learning English directly. Yeah, Pablo, it's all about practice. Maria, yeah, maybe I will make a video about my favorite books. I have been thinking about that. I, I wasn't sure if people would be interested, but if you say you're interested, then maybe I'll do that. Luciana, thank you. Besos. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Miriam. Yeah, it's amazing. I, would never have thought I could get 80,000 subscribers. It, it's uh, incredible and I, yeah, amazing. Do I enjoy teaching grammar? It feels like the most boring part of language. Some people love grammar. Um, it depends on the student, really. Some, it, if the, the student enjoys it, I don't hate it, but I prefer just, um, I prefer as someone asked me before about the dogme approach, more natural approach to teaching for the exams it's not so good we're just conversation and in correcting grammar and if we need to look at grammar but teaching a, a class of grammar i don't enjoy so much no marta thank you hannah thank you marta th um, welcome Ulrich. do you sp do you speak something spanish because a lot of people are living for their whole life yeah no i, I speak spanish not perfect it's not great but i i i wanted to learn spanish yeah uh, kropka you're welcome Manuel, you're welcome. Yeah, it's lovely to meet people live stream. I, I wish I could talk to all of you directly. This is as close as we can get at the moment. But um, uh, thank you. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. But you said I admire your teaching methods. Everything outstanding. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
Okay, guys, we're going to finish there. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, Cooper, hi, and um, maybe uh, hopefully I'll try and do another live stream in the future. In the future, if I can get a better internet connection. Um, but yeah, I I've enjoyed it. Krakow, just one more question. Oh, you're blind. Um, I want to learn British English, but its materials are less. What should I do? Oh, that's a tough question to end on. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, you have so many podcasts. Podcasts are fantastic. Podcasts and radio. Um, I would recommend podcasts. There are so many interesting podcasts and not so interesting podcasts. As I said, if you're preparing for a Cambridge exam, you need to read and listen to boring things too, because that uh, helps you. But podcasts would probably be my biggest tip for you. Uh, yeah, thank you. To, yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Vince's book for relevant uh, CA print. I, yes, I think it's okay. I would go with the Cambridge publications. I always recommend the Cambridge publications. They're better. Uh, you're welcome. A thought. Nice name. Um, Ronnie Ara Aravello. Arevalo, uh, thank you for, I love your videos. Thank you for giving us the best tip. You're very welcome. Ruslan, Ruslan de Nada. Um, Kubra, I, I want to appear in a, and I face a lot of difficulties in the writing task. I I don't know so much about the IELTS, I'm afraid. I'm Cambridge English exams. Um, there are many YouTubers out there who help with the IELTS. Okay, I have to put an end to this now. We could go on forever, but I really appreciate you joining me today. And um, and uh, I'll see you in the videos and hopefully for another another live stream soon. Okay, guys, take care.